Platelet plug formation, also called primary hemostasis, is the first of two steps needed for hemostasis. Hemostasis is how the body prevents blood loss when a blood vessel is injured or broken. Without hemostasis, even a minor injury would be life-threatening. Imagine dying from a nosebleed. During primary hemostasis, platelets clump up together and form a plug around the site of injury. Then in the second stage, called secondary hemostasis, the platelet plug is reinforced by a protein mesh made of fibrin. You can think of it like a brick wall where the platelets make up the bricks and the fibrin makes up the mortar that goes between the bricks. So going back to primary hemostasis, which is the clumping up of platelets, this step can be further divided into five more steps. Endothelial injury, exposure, adhesion, activation, and aggregation. Let's imagine that you accidentally slice a tiny artery in your finger while cutting fruit. Ouch! When this happens, the knife cuts several layers of the artery. The innermost layer of the artery is the endothelium, and it's made of endothelial cells. Just outside of this layer are several layers of smooth muscle cells, which controls the size of the lumen, or the inner diameter of the vessel, by contraction and relaxation. Outside of the smooth muscle, there's a layer of protein, specifically elastic fibers that give the blood vessel the ability to expand and contract. Outside of the elastic fibers, there's connective tissue made up of collagen, which is the major structural protein in humans. This fibrous layer protects the vessel and anchors it to the surrounding tissues. So the first thing that happens when the knife cuts your finger is endothelial injury. When that happens, Nerves that are attached to endothelial cells and the smooth muscle cells detect the injury and trigger a reflexive contraction of the smooth muscles near the injury site, called vascular spasm. This makes the vessel more narrow, to reduce blood flow and ultimately decrease blood loss through the damaged artery. Now, endothelial cells normally secrete nitric oxide and prostaglandins into the blood which cause nearby smooth muscles to relax. When there's endothelial injury, secretion of nitric oxide and prostaglandins decreases, and the endothelial cells secrete a protein called endothelin instead, which causes the smooth muscles to contract. The second step is exposure, and that's when damage to the endothelial cells exposes the collagen that's below them. And damaged endothelial cells release a protein called von Willebrand's factor that binds to this exposed collagen. The third step is adhesion, Platelets, which are small fragments of larger cells called megakaryocytes, continuously circulate in the blood. When endothelial cells are damaged, platelets come in contact with the von Willebrand factor bound to collagen. And platelets have a surface protein called GP1B that allows them to bind to the von Willebrand factor proteins. The fourth step is activation. When platelets bind to von Willebrand factor via GP1B, the platelet gets activated, which means that it does a few things. First, the platelet changes its shape, and its membrane forms tentacle-like arms allowing it to grab onto other platelets. Second, platelets release more von Willebrand factor, as well as serotonin, which is a tiny molecule that attracts more platelets to the area, and calcium, which is useful in secondary hemostasis. Platelets also release adenosine diphosphate, or ADP, and thromboxane A2. These two molecules are secreted into the blood and activate other platelets that haven't bound to von Willebrand factor. So as more and more platelets bind, there's a snowball effect, and soon a ton of platelets are activated. This is a positive feedback loop. Now, we don't want all of our platelets to be used up just because we got a tiny cut on our finger. So the positive feedback loop is limited to the injury site. The way that works is that prostaglandin and nitric oxide secreted by undamaged endothelial cells binds to platelets and keeps them from getting activated. So we have this tug of war between prostaglandin and nitric oxide, which are platelet inhibitors on one side, and ADP and thromboxane A2, which are platelet activators on the other side. Finally, when ADP and thromboxane A2 binds to platelets, they express a new surface protein called GP2B-3A kind of like unlocking a new level in a game. Once GP2B3A is expressed on the surface of the platelets, they're considered fully activated. 
The fifth and final step is aggregation. Now, the ADP in thromboxane causes platelets to stick to collagen and cause free-floating platelets to express GP2B3A. GP2B3A binds to fibrinogen, which is a circulating blood protein that acts like a little pair of handcuffs that links two platelets together. Now, each platelet has multiple GP2B3A receptors. As a result, platelets on the collagen can attach to fibrinogen, and that same fibrinogen can be bound by platelets floating in the blood. This allows platelets to rapidly aggregate at the site of injury and form a platelet plug that can help stop the bleeding. During secondary hemostasis, fibrinogen gets cleaved into fibrin and fibrin forms a protein mesh, kind of like a giant net that covers the platelet plug and keeps it together. All right, as a quick recap, primary hemostasis is the first step of hemostasis and is the process where a platelet plug forms to prevent further loss of blood from a damaged vessel. Primary hemostasis is divided into five distinct stages, endothelial injury, exposure, adhesion, activation, and aggregation.